Will the entropy of an isolated quantum system increase in time? In this video, we're going to answer that question and the answer might surprise you. Before we get started, however, I just want to plug my Discord channel. It's a growing community uh, where you can talk about many body physics, uh, graduate school, um, and ask for advice or insight from other people. Also, if you like my content and you like this video, uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Okay, so let's just hop right into this. It's important to note uh, first what I mean by an isolated system. An isolated system is a system where it cannot exchange energy or matter uh, with another physical system. What this means practically for us uh, is that the Hamiltonian of the system will be the generator of our system's dynamics. And importantly, the dynamics uh, will be unitary um, and they're generated uh, by the following uh, unitary operator. So now that we've discussed where the dynamics come from, let's talk about uh, what kind of state we might find our system uh, to be in. Since our system is a quantum mechanical one, it would be tempting to just define some pure state psi, uh, which would then evolve in time uh, with the usual equation. Uh, but instead for this more general uh, discussion, we're going to investigate density matrices, uh, which can be pure, or they can also be um, a mixed state. If you need a quick brush up on density matrices or a quick introduction, I recommend watching my video on density matrices. Or just to make the video self-contained, uh, we only really need to know the following properties about density matrices uh, for what will follow. Firstly, they're a completely equivalent description of the quantum state. So we're not losing anything by switching our language uh, from the ket state psi to the density matrix rho. The density matrix is a Hermitian matrix, meaning if we take the Hermitian transpose, rho is still itself. Importantly, this means that the eigenvalues of rho are real. Not only are they real, but all of the eigenvalues of rho lie between 0 and 1, inclusive. We can introduce the unitary transformation v, which diagonalizes our matrix rho. So let v times rho times v dagger equal to lambda. Now what this tells us is that v is a unitary transformation, uh, that diagonalizes rho, and lambda here is a diagonal matrix with the eigenvalues of rho on the diagonal. Then from what I said previously, uh, basically boils down to that the lambda j's, or the diagonal entries um, of our matrix lambda, these all sit on the real line between 0 and 1. These values also sum to 1, and all of these values summing to 1 is equivalent to the statement that the trace of our density matrix rho is equal to 1. While it isn't quite important uh, for the topic of the video, an easy way to test if a density matrix is pure or mixed is to test the so-called purity, which is the trace of the square of our density matrix. If our density matrix is pure, the purity will be equal to 1. And if our density matrix is mixed, this result will be strictly less than 1. Okay, so now that we have a general state rho in mind with a few of its properties, let's talk about how we calculate entropy for a quantum state. The von Neumann entropy is defined in terms of the density matrix and the trace as the following quantity. Now, the von Neumann entropy is an incredibly cool function, uh, but explaining all of its interesting properties, and more importantly, um, how it quantifies, for example, entanglement in quantum systems uh, is probably its own video. But for now, all we want to know in this video um, is its time-like properties. The first and most important property I will bring up is that entropy is invariant in the basis we choose to write the density matrix in. This should, of course, be a very intuitive physical demand that we have of entropy. To see this, we might rewrite our density matrix in the basis in which it is diagonal, where we are going to again write v times rho times v dagger is equal to lambda, which again allows us to rewrite this expression as v dagger times lambda times v is equal to rho. So plugging this transformation into the von Neumann entropy gives the following expression. 
Now, it's not immediately obvious that we can take the unitary matrices out of the matrix logarithm. But if we could take the unitary matrices out of the matrix logarithm, we see that we could simplify our expression inside of the trace and cancel all of the unitary matrices. So let's see why precisely we can take the unitary matrices out of the matrix logarithm. The matrix logarithm is defined such that if the exponential function of the matrix A equals B, then the matrix A is equal to the natural logarithm of the matrix B. We will assume here that A and B are Hermitian matrices uh, because in all cases that we're going to be interested in, uh, this will be precisely the case. And what this means for us is that B is diagonalizable um, as we have seen, of course, with rho. So we can again introduce a unitary transformation um, to put it into a diagonal form. So rewriting this, we get the exponential function of A is equal to uh, w, a unitary matrix, times d, a diagonal matrix, times uh, w dagger, which then tells you that a is equal to the logarithm of, again, that expression. Now, using the series definition of the matrix exponential, we can write out our matrix exponential in the following way. Reorganizing this expression by taking the unitary matrices to the left-hand side and then evaluating the series again gives us the following expression, which then by the definition of the logarithm of our matrix, we get the following expression. Taking the unitary matrices W to the right-hand side gets our desired result. We get A is equal to W times the natural logarithm of D, times w dagger, where both of the w's are outside of the matrix logarithm. So the unitaries can pop right out of the matrix logarithm. So returning to our entropy equation, taking the unitaries out of the logarithm, we can then cancel all of the unitaries uh, together by taking v dagger times v uh, is equal to the identity or the other way around. Um, so this allows us to write our entropy just as the Gibbs entropy or the Shannon entropy that we use in classical statistical mechanics, where the lambda m's are the eigenvalues of rho and the diagonal elements in particular of our matrix lambda. Now note that we are going to take the convention that zero times the natural logarithm of zero is equal to zero here. So this observation has a few consequences. Firstly, it means the entropy of a pure state is zero, since it will have one eigenvalue with the value of one, and the rest of the eigenvalues will be zero. The von Neumann entropy is in fact a quantifier of how mixed our state is, similar to the purity I discussed earlier. It in particular is maximized for the maximally mixed state. The second observation is that the von Neumann entropy for unitary dynamics which our isolated system is experiencing is time independent. We can evolve our density matrix with the following equation, where u of t here is the usual generator of dynamics, e to the negative i, Hamiltonian times t, where I've set h bar is equal to one. And this is a unitary matrix. We just proved that the von Neumann entropy is invariant under unitary transformations. So we have that the entropy of our density matrix at time t is equal to its initial value. And for the special case of a pure state, the entropy is zero for all time. So the answer to our video's question um, is no, the entropy of the system does not increase. And this is purely due to unitary dynamics. So when does entropy increase? Well, in the case of a subsystem um, of our total system, its entropy can increase. This is known as entanglement entropy, and our unitary dynamics will usually entangle the full system's subsystems. But this is a pretty deep topic, and we will save that for a later video. With that in mind, uh, I will end the video here. If you like the video, uh, please leave a comment uh, below, and feel free to like the video and subscribe to the channel uh, for more content.